kendi insanınıza güvenmeseydiniz, bu yola baş koymasaydınız, olur muydu? Ben Atak. Görevim Türkiye'nin gücüne güç katmak. Ben Atak. Kara Kuvvetleri Komutanlığı'nın ihtiyacını karşılamak üzere milletimin desteği, yerli sanayimin gücüyle her koşulda görev yapmak, her şartta başarmak için Türkiye'de üretildim. Tasarımımdan silah sistemime, gövdemdeki her kritik parçamda Türk mühendisinin bilgisi, Türk teknisyeninin becerisi var. Üstün görev yeteneklerimi, hassas görüş ve etkin vuruş kabiliyetimi, ulusal sanayimizin geliştirdiği ve ürettiği ileri teknolojiye sahip milli ve özgün sistemlerden aldım. Atak. Gökyüzüyle buluştuğum andan itibaren görevim ülkemin güvenliği için teknolojide ve cephede en önde olmak. Ben Atak. Gece gündüz, yağmur kar, yaz kış, soğuk sıcak. İşim en zor koşullara, en zorlu coğrafyalara meydan okumak. Manevra kabiliyetim... Kızım ve gücümle sarp dağların, derin vadilerin, karanlık mağaraların kaşifi ve avcısıyım. Yüksek teknolojiye sahip keskin avcı gözlerim ve ateş gücümle görevim hedefi hep 12'den bulmak. Ben en modern taarruz ve keşif helikopteriyim. Yerli tasarım milli görev bilgisayarım, silah ve aviyonik sistemlerimle gece gündüz... Her türlü hava ve arazi koşulunda en yüksek atış yüzdesine sahibim. Düşük ses, ısı, radar ve görsel izimle daima ayaktayım. Ben Atak. Hedefim dünyada ülkemin gururu ol. Gelişmiş teknolojik özelliklerim ve vurucu gücümle kara havacılığın geleceği Türkiye'den dünyaya barışın bekçisiyim. Tipping forward, going through transitional lift. Getting your speed and then pulling straight up to show the agility and maneuverability of this aircraft. It is a tough, aggressive machine. Türkiye'de yeni bir dönemin habercisiyim. Kazandırdığım altyapı, bilgi birikimi ve kabiliyetlerle dünyada çok az ülkenin sahip olduğu üstün gücün temsilcisiyim. Yüksek manevra kabiliyetim, atış üstünlüğüm, İleri teknolojim, hızım ve gücümle görevim 
şanlı ordumuzun gücüne güç katmak. Ben Atak. Çelikten kılıcım ve kalkanımla görevim barış, huzur ve güvenliğe uçmak. Ben Atak. Damarlarımda akan yerli sanayi kanımla ulusal egemenliğin koruyucusuyum. Yurtta sulh, canda sulh için bugün, yarın ve daima göreve hazırım.
Today, what's happening with North Korea and the United States? Well, North Korea now threatening to strike the U.S. territory in Guam, according to its state news agency. It's after President Trump's strongly worded warning to North Korea's leader over missile tests and nuclear threats. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Alarming to hear that kind of rhetoric coming from the mouth of a U.S. president, isn't it? Where are we here, Emily? Well, Kev, before uh, Trump made that statement, the Washington Post actually published an article uh, claiming that they've got their hands on this uh, report, uh, latest U.S. defense report. And then in this report, it claims that... Uh, the North Korea has developed a nuclear warhead small enough to fit inside a missile. And besides that, it also put a nuclear arsenal at 60 nuclear weapons, which mm. is a lot more than previously thought. Now, this Washington Post article, it didn't present any sort of evidence to show that they actually, the reporters in, in Washington Post, got their hands on this document. But despite that, it's been picked up by the American mainstream media. It's been widely reported. But besides uh, this Washington Post report, well, things really got to a boiling point on Tuesday when the U.S. flew two B-1B bombers over Guam uh, uh, with its allies in Japan and South Korea. And it's, it's, it's because it's after this drill that North Korea has issued a statement saying that they are considering to strike a U.S. base in Guam. Now, bear in mind that it's true. Throughout this year, North Korea has conducted numerous missile tests and it has angered the international community. But at the same time, while North Korea is flexing its military muscles, the U.S. has also significantly stepped up its military presence in the region. Mm. We're talking about sending an air, uh, air carriers conducting regular drills, sending in troops, and also fighter jets. And uh, so that's that's that. And in terms of rhetoric, uh, President Donald Trump, well, he's long been the, adopted an aggressive uh, attitude towards North Korea, and some would even call it provocative. Take a listen to what he has been saying about North Korea in the past. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. Many years, and it's failed. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. One of our capabilities lies with our considerable military forces. Every military expert says there is no good military well, option. Uh, they're wrong. There is What's a military a option to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. There's a chance that we could end up having a major major conflict with North Korea. Absolutely. Now, tensions on the Korean Peninsula really is higher than ever, and it's gone far beyond just a war for it. China and Russia have been calling for all sides to calm down and seek a political solution to this crisis unfolding there. And meanwhile, Australia and New Zealand also weighed in on what they thought about Trump's latest statement. Take a listen. Look, I think the comments are not helpful in an environment that's very tense. Uh, everyone wants to avoid military confrontation. The global community, led by the Security Council, including China and Russia, are all united in seeking to bring the maximum economic pressure on North Korea to bring them to their senses without conflict. Now, I have to wait and see whether or not Trump will take their advice, but certainly this situation in North Korea has got a lot of people worried in the international community. Yeah, Kevin. absolutely. Oh, keep following that. Keep us posted this afternoon. Yeah, thanks, Emily. So as tempers rise and patience wears thin, here's some uh, expert reaction we've been hearing on where it may go then. What this can't be is an ego fight. And right now, what it felt like was a fight between Trump on one side and Kim on the other, and to see who can m make more outlandish statements. And the fear is that if somebody flinches, if somebody screws up, there could be hundreds of thousands of dead people here. This is a very real fight. This is shockingly dangerous. And the last thing we need to do is stand down and start bumping chests and talk about who's the bigger man. I think the North Koreans have put forth, look, we will stop our missile tests if you stop your war games. We've been doing war games on that peninsula for 50 or 60 years from now. So what good does it to walk away from that entry point into negotiations other than the fact that the United States simply does not want to really enter into negotiations. I think that's been the roadmap for the way the United States has conducted itself with adversaries throughout the last half century. With North Korea, it seems as if we are expecting them to put up so much first without 
the United States putting up anything. In this case, pulling back the war games is not a big concession because we can always just restart the war games. Anti-war activists gathered in front of the White House today to protest President Trump's increasingly belligerent rhetoric towards North Korea and urged for negotiation instead of escalating tensions and risking nuclear confrontation. For more on this, we're joined tonight by former Florida Congressman Alan Grayson. Alan, nice to have you with us tonight. Let, let's consider the fact of what the president has said, and he really does mean it. Let's take him at his word. Does the president have to go get congressional authority to do a hit on North Korea? No one seems to be talking about that. Does he have the authority to do this? No, he's the commander in chief, and Congress has the authority to declare war. But in his case, uh, he doesn't seem to understand the basic principles of the Constitution. There is a madman on the loose with nuclear weapons, and in addition to that, Kim Jong un also has them. Uh, that madman is our president. Uh, I don't think the president would think twice about using nuclear weapons against North Korea uh, for the sake of denuclearizing or trying to denuclearize North Korea. But what he doesn't seem to understand is that he's playing with other people's lives. What we should be talking about is the possibility that an attack, probably a chemical warfare attack from North Korea, would kill between three and five million South Koreans in the course of less than a day. Now, if that's the case, what are we going to do to try to, try to prevent that? The question is not whether they're going to lob missiles that are going to miss Guam. The question is whether if we attack North Korea, what will they do in response? Mm -hmm. And that's something that seems absent from our so-called diplomacy and from our so-called saber-rattling, so, rational thought. So North Korea now says tonight, no more talking, that they don't believe that they can negotiate with Donald Trump. So how do we defuse this? How does the world community defuse this? Well, I'll tell you, you don't defuse it by putting out a statement that could have been written by North Korea. He's such a patsy. He's such a fool. North Korea literally could have written the statement that Donald Trump made, and it wouldn't have been any different. They want us to be saber-rattling against them. That is their raison d'etre. That is their only raison d'etre for the past 50 years, mm -hmm. the idea that the United States is going to attack and occupy North Korea. And he got suckered right into it. All right. I guess I'm maybe too much of a purist here when it comes to negotiation, but I'm a little miffed at congressional reaction. Why are they so passive? Why, why are there no press conferences? Why are uh, congressional leaders not speaking up right now? I mean, and I'll hearken back to the days of Ted Kennedy and Paul Wellstone. If they were still in the well of the Senate, They'd be on the Senate floor tonight calling for rhyme and reason as to what the heck this president is saying and just how threatening North Korea is. But the chamber's silent. What's your take on that? Well, they're out of session, so therefore uh, they're bored and detached and not doing anything useful. Uh, that's what happens when Congress is out of session. But the, the fact is that this is a, a problem without any easy solutions. This one requires active thought, and therefore congressmen shy away from it. What they could be more important decisions. than the possibility of nuclear war, uh, the senators having a vacation or holding a town hall? I mean, it would seem to me that there would be a sense of urgency amongst our lawmakers to get back into Washington and figure out what the next step is going to be or to be reassured that there's not going to be, uh, you know, assured mu mutual destruction here. No, I mean, there's been a, a conspiracy involving both parties that goes back generations in this country to relinquish the hard decisions to the president, including decisions of war and peace. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. It's not what the Constitution anticipated at all. It's not the way the, a rational country runs itself, not with one man with his finger on the button playing with it. Alan Grayson, always a pleasure. Good to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your candid opinion. More on the reaction with inside the administration. We go to Manila Chan tonight. In Manila, there is a new threat this evening from North Korea. And you are exactly right. This evening, the DPRK lobbed yet another threat over to Washington. They said they are ready to launch four immediate immediate range missiles in the direction of Guam, claiming that they will get them in and around the U.S. territory within miles of landfall. Landfall. Now, the KPA says they plan to do this by mid-August. The wording very ominous, the date's kind of unclear, the language a bit fuzzy, but the message is clear. They said, quote, the strategic force is also considering 
the opening of the historic enveloping fire at Guam, a practical action targeting the U.S. bases of aggression. But prior to the KPA issuing that statement this evening, Mattis did not dial down that rhetoric earlier today. Instead, he said this. He said, quote, the DPRK should cease any consideration of actions that would lead to the end of its regime and the destruction of its people. Meanwhile, today, en route back to the U.S. following the ASEAN summit, the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson appeared to take a more measured tone. This is a trend we're seeing with Tillerson. He's sort of seen as the adult in the room, careful to tone it down a notch, yet still able to back his boss. What the president is doing is sending a strong message to North Korea in language that Kim Jong-un would understand because he doesn't seem to understand diplomatic language. I think the president just wanted to be clear to the North Korean regime that the U.S., you know, unquestionable ability to defend itself, will defend itself and its allies. And I think it was important that he deliver that message to avoid any miscalculation. Now, a lot of people on the left are saying this is a divided administration, that there's no real defined plan of action on North Korea. But according to the State Department spokesperson, the words we're hearing are a matter of tone on the same message. The secretary happens to be coming back from the ASEAN conference where they had tremendous success. It was a good week for diplomacy. I know you all want to obsess over statements and all of that and try to want to make a lot of uh, noise out of that. But what is important to keep in mind is that this diplomatic pressure at ASEAN at the meeting of the 10 Asian nations along with the United States came to a joint agreement and a joint statement and put out a very strong condemnation of North Korea. We are all singing from the same hymn book. So you heard it right there, Ed. If you parse through the words uh, that each person used, it really boils down to someone's vernacular, the choice of words that come naturally for them. At the end of the day, it sounds as though the administration is not stepping down from the threats issued by pr the president yesterday. Uh, all this nuclear talk, though, coming on the anniversary of the atomic bomb being dropped on Nagasaki back in 1945. And the DPRK's final words this evening might seal their fate. So this is diplomacy, I guess. Modern day Making diplomacy during, during the Trump Trump administration. administration. <laughs> Zabian Gundan 보항의 조국소종동치고 
박종춘 육군 중장의 지휘차를 손들어 열병 박 전쟁이 일어나면 바죽지세로 달려나가 세상에 둘도 없는 우리식의 주체 무기들로 적들을 무자비하게 진문기 버리려는 열정에 기상한 거 너도 쳐 나가는 기계와 동대들의 영영함이 <목소리> 스펙트 슈프림 리더 김정은 Chairman of the Workers' Party of Korea Chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army guided the paratrooping and target striking competition of Special Operation Units of the Korean People's Army 2017. Participating in the competition were combatants of the Special Operation Battalion directly on the Unit 525 the 4th Striking Corps of the 5th Detachment and the Unit 2625 of Large Combined Unit 630, the 2nd Striking Corps of the 1st Detachment and the Unit 252 of the Navy and the 1st Striking Corps of the 1st Detachment and the Unit 323 of the Air and Anti-Aircraft Force of the Korean People's Army and regiments of light transport planes and gunships of the Air and Anti-Aircraft Force. Kim Jong-un was briefed on the plan of the competition at the observation post and gave an order to start the competition. Light transport planes hitch-hopped into the sky over the training ground and combatants dropped down like a hail. Beaming all over his face, Kim Jong-un said with pleasure, the combatants are really good at minimum altitude paratrooping. They are bold and confident soldiers. The commanding officers of the striking corps and the pilots of the formations of light transport planes have correctly fixed the paratrooping point, altitude and time of bailing out in cooperation. I can see that they had a deep study of the reconnaissance information on the enemy targets. Seeing the courageous combatants destroying the enemy targets right and left, he said with great delight, the decision adopted by the commanding officers is correct. The combatants carrying out their missions independently and positively are reminiscent of fierce tigers leaping over the mountains of south of Korea. Kim Jong-un also watched an automatic rifle ball firing of the combatants of the Special Operation Battalion directly under Unit 525 of the Korean People's Army and praised them, saying, The bullets seem to have eyes. They are really excellent in firing. They are crack shots who never miss the targets. He said with great excitement, the paratrooping and target striking competition of special operation units of the Korean People's Army 2017, which was held with success at the significant time of greeting the 105th birth anniversary of the great leader President Kim Il-sung, is a gift of loyalty of the powerful Revolutionary Army of Mount Baekdu, presented to the President, who made devoted efforts to complete the combat preparations of the People's Army, saying the service personnel of the People's Army should think of national reunification, awake or asleep, and train harder and harder. Chegun 잘 훈련된 병사만이 싸움마당에서 영적 위원을 세울 수 있으며 결전의 하루를 위해 훈련의 백날 전날을 땀과 함께 이어가는 군인이 참된 애국자라고 하시면서 군인들은 항상 전쟁의 날에 마음을 얹어두고 훈련으로 새날을 맞고 지는 해를 보내야 한다고 말씀하셨습니다. 
중요한 최고령도 자동식에서는 격전 전야의 첨예한 정세의 요구에 맞게 있는 군대의 모든 사업이 절도철미 전투정치 훈련에 지향되고 복정되어 나가야 한다고 하시면서 인민군 장병들은 훈련이자 군대이고 열배까지 군사과업 중에서도 훈련이 첫 번째라는 것을 명심하고 훈련을 생활화, 습성화, 체질화 하여 그 어떤 전투 임무도 자립적으로 능숙히 수행할 수 있는 일당백 싸움권 적들이 그 이름 만들어도 벌벌 떠는 백두산 호랑이들로 억세게 준비해야 한다고 강조하셨습니다. 중요한 최고령도 자동식에서는 중기대회에서 1등을 쟁취한 조선인민군 제5.25 군부대 직속 특수작전 대대의 쌍안경과 자동보청을 기념으로 주시고 중기대회 참가자들과 함께 기념사진을 찍으셨습니다. 인민군 지휘 성원들과 경기대회 참가자들은 사회주의 강국 건설을 진두에서 지휘하시는 그처럼 바쁘신 속에서도 몸소 경기대회를 지도해 주시고 한없는 사랑과 믿음을 비풀어 주신 중요한 최고령도자 동지에 대한 고마움에 격정을 금치 못하면서 흥문지 화양 내설인 훈련장마다에서 훈련 경영의 불길을 세척에 지펴 올림으로써 수령결성위의 청대 저국수의 총칼을 더욱 옥색에 벼려갈 불타는 맹세를 다졌습니다. <목소리> 스포크스만포더제너스타프오브더코리안피플사미이슈더스테이트먼온더포틴더스테이트먼센더디피아케폴리시추스바이더트럼프드미니스트레이션이스퍼스트리투플라이하이인텐시티센션스앤프레시투더